Hello viewer, my name is Margaret Changeshi from Lokut Girls High School in Form 4. Welcome to Science Hub. My colleague is Eunice Wanjura. Today we'll be discussing on support in movement and plants. Today we will be discussing on support in movement in animals. Now, tissues and organs of multicellular organisms require a rigid frame, framework to hold them in position. Now, this framework maintains the shape of the organisms and gives the body its support. There are three, there are three types of skeletons, namely hydrostatic skeleton, which can also, can also be known as hydroskeleton, exoskeleton, and the endoskeleton. Hydrosca hydrostatic skeleton, it is made up of supportive fluid under pressure surrounded by muscles. It is found in the soft-bodied animals such as the earthworm. Now the exoskeleton, this is whereby the cuticle which performs the functions of the skeletons lies outside the muscles. This is seen in insects and arthropods. We also have endoskeleton. Now in endoskeleton, the skeleton elements, bone and cartilage are internal. It is found in vertebrates. Functions of the skeleton. Now the skeleton supports and gives the body its shape. It protects the delicate organs of the body. Three, it allows body movements with the help of the muscles. It provides the site for muscles to attach. Five, it, the endoskeleton in vertebrates also performs blood cells. The exoskeleton, on the other hand, protects the organisms from excessive drying or desiccation. We move on to the mammalian skeleton. In mammals, the bones and the muscles work together to bring support and movement. The skeleton system in mammals is divided into two pairs. That is the axial, the axial and the, and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton, this consists of the skull, sternum, rib cage, and the vertebral column. This is a sample of a skeleton that belongs to a rabbit. As you have said, this is an axial skeleton. It consists of the skull, the vertebral column, the ribs, and the sternum, which holds the are the bony parts of the ribs. Uh, this, to go to the types of vertebral columns, this is the cervical vertebral column, the thoracic vertebral column, the lumbar vertebral column, and the scaral vertebral column, which is at the end, it's also called the tail skull. Now, the vertebral column, as we've been told, uh, consists of the, um, of the different types of columns. That is the cervical vertebrae, the thoracic vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, scaral, and finally the caudal vertebrae. Now, these vertebrae have got common basic, common basic plan as shown.
this is the neural spine. The neural arc. Neural canal, the central, transverse processes, and this is the articular facet. The centrum, yeah, it is a solid structure of the vertebra. It supports weight of the vertebra. Uh, collectively, uh, the sternum supports the entire vertebral column. The transverse processes provide a surface area for muscle attachment. The neural spine also has the same function as the transverse processes, that is to give a surface area for the attachment of muscles. The neural canal allows passage of the uh, spinal cord. Now, as we've been told, the centrum is a solid structure, as we've seen, so it's a solid structure of the vertebra. Transverse processes in short, they are just uh, projections which offer surfaces of muscle and ligament uh, attachment. As she's also said, the neuron canal, um, together with the centrum, they protect the spinal cord. Uh, we we'll move on to cervical vertebrae. The cervical vertebrae are found in the neck region. There are seven cervical vertebrae. All cervical vertebrae have vertebral canals and transverse processes. These are the transverse processes and the canal. The first two are atlas and axis. This is the atlas. This is the axis. And this is the axis. As you can see, the atlas has a very small neural spine. It's almost not visible. See at the top. It also has transverse processes. They're here. Which increase the surface area for muscle attachments. The, the atlas. Before you go to the atlas, the axis allows nodding of the head. The atlas allows the turning of the head from left to right. Now the atlas has facets that articulate with the skull to allow nodding movement, as she's just said. The axis also have a wide centrum, which forms a, a protrusion called the ontin odonotoid process, which allows the rotation movement of the head, as she, had, as she had just said. We move on to the thoracic vertebrae. Now these are found uh, in the thorax region, articulating with the ribs. They provide the site for muscles in the thorax to attach. An example, this is the neural spine, the centrum, the neural canal, the facets, and the transverse processes. Now the characteristics are, they have a long neuron spine as you can see. Now this one increases the surface area for the back muscles to attach. They also have a prominent centrum. 
yeah, to support the weight above them. They also have short transverse processes for the articulation of ribs. They have, artic they have articular surfaces covered with cartilage, for example, the pre -zyga, zygapophysis, which are found between the adjusted, uh, ad adjacent vertebrae. The cartilage reduces the friction between the adjacent and the adjacent bones. So we move on to lumbar vertebrae. Now this is an example of a lumbar vertebrae. As we mentioned earlier, these are the transverse processes, the centrum, the neuron, up, and the neuron spine, as we have seen. Uh, characteristics of lumbar vertebrae. They have a well-developed, that is, a thick, long, and strong transverse processes, increasing the surface area for ad abdominal muscle to attach. They have projections, such as metapoyf metapoyphesis, for increasing surface area for muscle attachment. They have a thin centrum for supporting the upper body weight. Now, we, after she said that, we move on to the last part of the, of the, yeah, the last part of the support and momentum animals. And that's the scaral and the cock, cock gear, vertebrae. Now these are fused and provide the side for muscles of the hips and the tail to attach. This is an example of a sacral vertebrae. These are the transverse processes which allow sub, uh, attachment of muscles, the neural spine, the prezygophorus. Yeah, that's all. The characteristics uh, located the the sacral vertebrae are located at the sacral region. Now they have they are five in number. In human beings, that is, but in rabbits, they are four. They have large and broad centrum, as you've just seen. And the neural, the new, the new neural canal is narrow, and the neural spine is reduced. Fused to perform rigid structure that make the sacral firm and strong, and to bear body weight and spread it to the legs through the pelvic girdle. Now this is an example of a pelvic girdle. So we move on to the caudal vertebrae. It is found in the tail region. The number of vertebrae differs from the one in animals to the other depending on the size of the tail. The tail of the human being is vestigial. There are four caudal vertebrae. The neural spine and the zygophysis are very reduced. The neural arc and the neural the neural arc and the neural canal are absent. The, the entire bone is especially the centrum. We also have the appendicular skeleton. Now the appendicular skeleton consists of the girdles and the limbs attached onto them. The girdles are the pectoral girdle or on the interior side and the pelvic girdle on the posterior side. Now the limbs to the anterior part of the body are the four limbs and those to the posterior part of the body are the hind, hind limbs. Now this is a part of a scapula. It's for a rabbit. As you can see. We've come to the end of our discussion today on Science Hub. 
I have been Margaret Wangeshi. Mimi Sanjaya. Keep it. Elimo TV. Watch and learn.